So here we are on a Thursday morning. This is getting confusing, Pat. Thursday yes, morning. Yes, it absolutely is. I, I, we knew our listeners, our viewers couldn't wait yeah, another 24 <laughs> hours. So we are serving it up 24 <laughs> hours in advance. Yeah. Um, are you well this morning, Pat? I'm fine. Just, just was lovely this morning. But I see yeah. you, I'm giving you the, the, the daily uh, or update on the weather, but it's starting to rain here. So I was intending doing my grass, but there you go. Oh, well, what a shame. You know, I'm sure you're deeply disappointed. Oh, I'm broken. I'm broken hearted here. <laughs> <laughs> it's important we know the weather you're getting uh, in the uh, Liberty. Because you're getting very short. What are we getting done? Exactly. Going to We're going to get another hour's time. <laughs> anyway, anyway, we have a lot of important stuff to be talking about. And the first one is one we've talked about already. And uh, to some extent, I feel my views have been vindicated. Uh, the Tory Grant National, as you put it. Like, yeah. They're not horses. They're not horses. They're people. Uh, uh, Tory people. I would usually, you know, I know the way in a political race is usually only about two. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, 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 the race for the Tory leadership started with about 14 or 15 runners and riders. And you're uh, going, Jesus, where are we going here? Boris Johnson was right in one thing, by the way. He said that there was no obvious successor. And the proof of the, the pudding is the fact that there were so many uh, people threw their names under the hat uh, and, and, and so it's gone going. Well, well, hey, Jude, uh, uh, your uh, particular favourite from Monday. Penny, <laughs> for your thoughts, Martin. <laughs> I have Penny I, for your thoughts. I, I like, I like, it looks like I, I am now thinking, you know, the way some sometimes Rishi Sunak, as compromised no matter what way you come at it. Like he's hmm. a big favourite with the MPs and so on. And he got 88 votes to Penny Morton, 67, I think it was. Yeah. And so on. And But he's big within the party and he's apparently very bright and all this sort of stuff. And they all they love him. But Penny Morton has not compromised or is not sullied by serving in Boris's cabinet. She's She's got the looks. She's Apparently she's very warm and friendly. People like her. She's got a good sense of humour. I think she's pretty right wing. But, uh, you know, she can come out and say, look, no matter what's happened, my hands are clean. And see, uh, the, you see, once the the final two, it's no longer just the MPs, it goes out to the uh, Tory party membership. Yeah. Uh, which, which is, I think, uh, was it 150,000 or 200,000, whatever it is, yeah. or, or yeah. someone around that. And you can bet your life, Jude, no matter what, and nobody's going to say it out loud, but a blonde, good-looking white woman there's always an advantage uh, over uh, Britain today, which is still overwhelmingly white. And I think that's going to be a factor. Plus the fact that Martin, as I said earlier, has not been in touch uh, with any sort of scandal in regard to Boris. And, you know, I, I, it always comes across this way. I remember meeting a guy in the wake of Barack Obama, an American guy. The old white establishment and the Tory party is a very much an old white establishment. Can they, will they uh, be sufficiently liberal to vote for a guy who was born as a, somewhere in Asia or somewhere? I'm not quite sure where he was born. Well, I, I take your point, all right, Pat, and certainly that's not the usual Tory, yeah. <laughs> certainly Tory leader. But um, they, I think they have sought to shake off that image because if you Absolutely. look through like Pretty Patel, uh, the number of people that uh, ja Shavid Javid, uh, uh, no, no, Han, so um, on, yeah, they and Richie yeah, and yeah, yeah. all the rest. So, yeah, they're, they're sort of protect and the Labour Party the same. Uh, they've sort of protected themselves. So, I'm not sure it would be a terrible stretch to yeah. have him as a prime minister. And also, they would be they could look to his record and say, Look, you know, he's see nobody thought of it furlough before he came up with it or whoever came up with it, but he was yeah, the one yeah. that sort of uh doled it out. So I have a feeling that'll be a, a big plus for him. On the other hand, I take your point. He's um, he's not new. In fact, he's a bit dull. Um, yeah. And some people say, well, dull's what we want now after Boris. But then yeah. there's the old saying that he who wields the knife will never wear the crown. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I, I thought Penny Martin had the, they said some of the notices yesterday said she had the wind in, behind her because she's yeah. sort of rising suddenly. But I look, I look today at Paddy Power, or was it last night? And they're both at two to nine um, on. So there's not there's not a cigarette paper would uh, separate them at the moment. Who well, you your money be on if you had to choose, Pat? I, I'd put my money now on Penny Martin. I'll tell you why, Jude. Uh, see, you want to get the uh, once this, this runners and writers, but uh, it goes out to the country and watch the, watch the absolute. Uh, uh, there's no other term for it. Watch the shit hit the fan then, because. Uh, Richie Shunak, number one, he had a, he kept a green card, didn't he? He was keeping yeah. his options open while he was going to go to America. I said, mm -hmm. his wife is a non-dom. 
Yeah. He uh, he said uh, years ago, apparently, there's a video of him circulating somewhere in the background that he didn't have any working class friends. He's worth something like 400 million. His wife is worth something like 600 million and so on. You can bet your life, Petty Martin's going to turn around and say, look, I'm from, you know, I'm your Tory aspirant. My dad was in the army or something. By mm. the way, apparently he was in the parachute regiment and uh -huh. apparently served in Northern Ireland. That'd be interesting to find out. Uh -huh. But anyway, uh, so like she can say, I'm just from, the, I'm the same as you. And I can say, mm. did you use the term earlier on, the ones on her seals? I would think that as this goes on, all the all the stuff, the background about uh, Sunak will start to become a big issue because he, you know, he, Judy can't sort of turn around and say, do a sort of a Pontius Pilate match. I had nothing to do with um, um, uh, Boris Johnson. Well, I, yeah, I agree with that. Uh, I, I, we, but I'm not sure, not 100% sure about that thing that uh, being different from us, you know, ordinary people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If we're talking about ordinary people, like same lower middle class or working class, yeah. Um, I remember back in the 60s working in a factory in England, and I remember this guy, really, really nice guy. And all he lived for was having a jar, a jar and going to the bookies. And uh, I mean, he was a foreman or the charge hand or whatever. Uh, and he's talking about politics, and he said he always voted Tory. And I said, sure, they, they, they wouldn't have your interest at heart. And he says, yes, but they have the money. Uh, they have the money, and you need money to run a country. And there's no point in kidding yourself. You've got to put the guys who've got the money in there. Uh, so there'll be people who I think who will th consider Richie Sunak could do that for himself and his wife. Uh, Why yeah. couldn't you do the same thing for our country? Yeah, I heard somebody come out, uh, which I think is the biggest load of bullshit you could come up with. <laughs> you know, to, uh, like uh, that's I consider that that's like uh, like people in uh, the Rust Belt states in America who voted for Trump. This is a guy who will look after us. The first thing he did was give his pals a big uh, uh, what do you call it. Uh, uh, tax break and try to get rid of Obamacare. So that's how good that system works. It's moronic. Uh, yeah. Well, you know that, and I know that, Pat, but I'm not sure that the people who like to uh, sort of dutifully fall in line and have a really great leader, like, say, Boris, until he was yeah. found out. Uh, yeah. the, uh, I think there's a strong sort of longing in human beings, particularly working class again, to have somebody strong up there who really has, has the muscle. I, 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 that's that's a, Judah, there's no doubt about that. Like, I, I, I reckon, uh, like, I watch, the, I keep coming back to this and, and private conversation. I watched a program some years back where a woman was asked on a quiz program to name one of Britain's two uh, uh, female prime ministers and couldn't. <laughs> I was going, is this for real, too? You know, I, I, I'm serious. It was asked. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it, it was a simple question. Like Jesus, you'd think it wouldn't be that difficult to say Theresa May or Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> maybe they yeah. had maybe the censor, Freudian censor was working. Not um, to, they don't uh, think maybe, Thatcher. Uh, <laughs> and, and the lack of political intelligence sometimes just really does worry me. That you know these people who buy this uh, but wasn't there was a famous uh, politician, I can't remember he says, Thank God for stupid people. <laughs> <laughs> There's another one that said the people have spoken, the bastards. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Pat, I'll tell you something you need to think, and I often say this to my dear wife, or she says it to me very often. We're the exception. Being interested mean? in politics, really interested in it, uh, yeah. you're, you're exceptional. Most people don't give a damn. Uh, yeah. They All they want is not to allow the place go to pieces. They want to have their pay packet reasonable size when they get it, and they want to have the opportunity to have a decent holiday in a decent home. Most people think, ah, they say, ah, they're credit crooks, you know, but yeah. they, 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 they kind of let it go. Look at the number of people that don't even vote. One yeah. third of the population uh, can't be bothered to vote. That's how interested most people are in politics. So I was uh, Plato said something along the line, the price that uh, we pay for not taking an interest in politics is that we get, uh, the country gets ru run by ruinous people. <laughs> you know, Very good. You no. Know, you know, yeah, well, that's, yeah. that's true. Uh, yeah. For sure, for sure. Uh, but still, uh, it's all, the contest is always interesting. But I must yeah. say, I must say, uh, you need to keep in mind, too, that uh, there's, like, there's about 14 of them, or wads. Uh, but um, a lot of them are only positioning themselves. A lot of them know they're not going to you, win. You know, no, yeah, yeah. But it should, if you can deliver 20 votes to uh, Rishi Sunak, and you say, R R Rishi, I've got 20 supporters. I've got my letters in the bag here. And I, oh, yeah. I can deliver them for you if you give me the Chancellor of Exchequer or Foreign oh, Secretary. Oh, yeah. By God, oh, you're in a nice bargaining position for a big job. That's oh, yeah. serious influence, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's that's what it's about, I think, for, for yeah. many of them. And yeah. when you strip them out, I suppose the three that are now running, Truss, 
uh, Richie Sunak and Penny and Morton, Penny Morton are, are the three that look like they might be uh, there for the final. Uh, by, the, by the way, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, let's trust, you know, like she reminds me of uh, the head girl in the school. She's dull and she's boring. <laughs> and and she, she has also been uh, uh, sort of you know, judged by the company. Keep Like she was in Boris's cabinet. Yeah. Wait, if Dr. Collins, one quick question for you. One thing I, I I think you brought up on Monday, but we didn't discuss it, or you said um, yeah, we know about it. Not one of them has distanced themselves from the protocol. They're all still going to push ahead with it. <laughs> That's right. That's right. They didn't mention it actually during their campaigning, but then no. you know when they said uh, what would their line be on what Boris was doing, you know they'd be following that. None of them. I, I thought there was some degree of doubt about uh, Rishi Sunak. Was he not being a uh, wee well, bit uh, about no, it? Well, uh, he's neutral on the side of doing it. I think. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I predict that whoever comes in will find a way to come to terms with the EU, and yeah. I, I also predict that uh, uh, the <laughs> TU will be shafted once again. Uh, yeah, so that's it's, it's, it's kind of interesting, you know, um, and it gives us something to think about. And you uh, know, you've got. Yes, you, point, do you, you know your line. Uh, he who wields a knife rarely wears the crown. Aye, that's what the say. first person, the first person to stand up and say I'm resigning was Savage Javid, and look really? what happened to him yesterday. He <laughs> get thirty, you know. So Aye. you're right. I think Aye. that could be the end of his career. Uh, you know, but look, look on the other hand, that who was the second person six minutes later? Oh, Rishi Aye, Rishi Shuna. Aye, but <laughs> Aye, but the, the person who uh, made the first cut. Yeah, yeah. But did you know? Uh, interesting factoid. Did you know that besides being Penny Mordant, uh, she is a Catholic? No. <laughs> She's a Catholic. I just, well, by the way, that, that's going to be very interesting. The yeah, it's just like Jacob, Jacob, Jacob yeah. Rees-Mogg is a Catholic. I, I, oh, uh, Jacob Rees-Mogg as well. But here's the other thing. Boris Johnson, I still find this fascinating. Boris Johnson succeeded in getting married for as uh, the third time in the Catholic Church. And yet, I was uh, talked to somebody the last day, a friend of mine uh, got married, and somebody said, how did he get married in the Catholic Church? He's been married before. Hmm. And somebody says, you can't get married in the Catholic Church, you've been married before. So, work that out for me. It's not a, it's not a discussion we can have today, but just uh, throw uh, it out there. Well, I think the days when you're told that Recite the ten, twelve, ten commandments. Twelve when he said the ten commandments. Yeah, yeah. The, the ten commandments. Uh, yeah. That day is gone. That's the Hollywood and version. <laughs> there's, a, there's a sort of um, I don't know. Uh, most people, most Catholics nowadays have. If they're Catholics, they're a la carte Catholics. You know, ah, there's absolutely. things they can't, they can't handle, and they just quietly dismiss them. Anyway, yeah. let's move on to something equally thrilling, which was two days ago now. My God, is it two days ago? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was two days no, ago. No, no, no. The 12th of July. What a day. What a day. The world was blessed. And say, I'm referring to 1690, of course, now, not 1942. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you have a view on what um, Naomi Long was saying uh, yesterday. Yeah. Did she say it on the 12th? Or did she, she, she say it on the 12th? Uh, she said it on the 12th uh, because it was r- relating, uh, relating, relating to what happened the night before. Okay. She said she, she said that she didn't think she could be shocked anymore that anything had happened on the, you know, the, around the celebrations of the 12th. But this time she really was. She said she actually was physically sick. She saw effigies of herself, Michelle O'Neill and um, Mary Lou MacDonald uh, and Larn. And, and, you know, and she says, uh, basically they were hanging there and she says she says we're very disturbing she says, uh, she says I'm not sharing them because any family maybe who has su- suffered suicide uh, a suicide would be find them traumatic and all the rest but she says the fact that so many there's such hatred and, and so on that we had put this up plus the uh, there was the usual, there, there's a reference to us uh, I'm not going to say it in public but uh, the sexuality of one person there were mm. one one person was described in a very derogatory terms and so on dude but it was a hate fest. was the word uh, it's not okay okay I'm, you know and, and and so on and you sort of go dude this is sort of getting a bible every time the police do nothing the health and safety people do nothing uh the, the authorities do nothing oh pack, yet, pack, pack. don't be too hard on the police now the police say they're going to investigate it ah oh, god that's good i uh, <laughs> Jude, you know the one thing that, uh, that does strike me as well, is I'm just throwing this at you. Not only is it the normal, but there's a serious amount of and, and loyalism, as far as I can see, misogynistic. It's, yes. it's definitely come up a level since yeah. Mer, uh, yeah. Michelle O'Neill, yeah. Naomi Long, and Mary Lou McDonald have come uh, center stage. Uh-huh, uh-huh. There's an old macho thing in loyalism, as far as as, as far as I can see, yeah. and they have really gone for the women. 
Uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, I think it was always there, right back to the DUP yeah. making mooing sounds whenever uh, Monica McWilliams would stand up to speak in the yeah. line of the Women's Coalition. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there's a sort of a, a, a contempt for women. I, see, it's the old thing, Pat, you know yourself. When people are pretty near the bottom of the heap, they look around and find is there somebody they could stand on. And if they can find somebody, they think, oh, a woman, well, I'll stand on her. Or, oh, a Catholic, I'll stand on them. Or, you know, whatever. So uh, that's what you're seeing displayed there. But I, you're right, Pat. The point is that every year, uh, politicians bemoan this. Uh, unionist politicians bemoan this. Now, if they really cared about it, they would have done something about it because it's been Absolutely. going on for decades after decade. Yeah. So what is it? Are they afraid of the paramilitaries or are they yep. afraid that they'll suffer electorally if they uh, yeah. wait in there? Yeah. Dude, here's the thing. I presume that the police have enough information to go talk to the organizers and the prime movers of the builders of these bonfires. Mm. They could bring them in and uh, arrest them and bring them in and sort of say, look, uh, you're responsible for this and so on and really give them a hearty. Never happens. Doesn't happen. Richard, here's, here's a, I'm going to go off on a tangent here. There was a really good story enough, uh, yesterday on the Joe Duffy show on RT. Uh, it was Katie Hannon was standing in for Joe. And this girl, uh, kind of, uh, um, her name might have been Cleona. Here's a quick one for you. She said that last uh, Monday or Tuesday, they made a, Monday, sorry, they made a short decision that they were going to go north. She said she didn't even think of July the 12th. She didn't even think on it. So she ran, she, they intended to go uh, uh, hiking in the mountains of Morn. Now, she didn't say exactly where she had booked the place, so I really can't say where. But she rang up this Airbnb and she said, look, uh, I'm, me and my partner want to book this Airbnb. And she said she was surprised to be asked, was, was she a Catholic or was she a Protestant? And she just didn't pay any attention. So she answered, well, I'm a Catholic. I'm Irish, obviously. And she says, what, but my partner is Polish, but she says he's Catholic too. So she says, she, she says it took them a couple of hours to come back here and then, okay. So the, the, the next day they were on their way and she says they were about 90 minutes or an hour away from where they were. And she says, she got a phone call to say that, the, sorry, the booking, there's a double booking and you can't come. And she says, you can't, Don, you can't have a double booking in Airbnb. Either it's there or it's not there. You know, the house is there and so on. So she says, she copped on. And anyway, bottom line of it all was, basically, he's, uh, your man admitted that uh, the fact that they were Catholic and Irish, that he didn't want them there. Now, whether he was trying to say, look, you shouldn't come north on, on, on July 12th, it's not a good idea, or uh, he was being bigoted, I'm not 100% certain. But anyway, this was the whole thing. But anyway, there's this guy, Damien, I think he was from either Kevin and Mullen, come on. And he sort of said, look, you know, this is overplayed and it's typical Irish uh, RT and so on, so on. <laughs> but, and he said, he had worked in the North. He was from the South, but he'd worked in the North three years. And, and everybody in the unionist community were great people and seriously were played. But then it went halfway. But by the way, you shouldn't have been coming North this time of the year anyway. So he, he sort of, you know, he was saying how wonderful it was and there was no bigotry. But then he was saying, well, you shouldn't be coming up on the 12th of July. You know, well, uh, it's sort of totally, you know, it's sort of like, by the way, there's uh, uh, there's no no just bigotry against black people. Hey, but I don't join the Ku Klux Klan. Mm -hmm. Well, I was down in Dublin on, on uh, Monday, as you know, and uh, we took a taxi at one stage, and I was talking to a taxi man, and he was saying that uh, he, when I heard her accents, he said, or my accent, he said, um, oh, "I heard things now and so on." And uh, oh, so I tell you, they're well improved. He said, "I remember." Taking a, I, there was this company of people who wanted to go up to play golf in Royal Port Rush, where, yeah. where Rory McIlroy played. And he said, uh, they, they, once they saw the Dublin registered car, uh, taxi, yeah. uh, the, the amount of sort of, um, hard to describe, a degree of hostility almost. Yeah. That it was there, uh, which which struck me as a rather odd way to promote uh, tourism. Yeah. You know, anybody coming in is going to be repulsed if they come from the south. It's yeah. crazy, absolutely uh, crazy. Another one, one last point on this, Pat. We'll move on from that. They, I, I was reading the case in the newspaper the other day, and it was some guy who he asked, he called in the police, right, and uh, uh, the police came in, and then it was found that he was this was there was nothing that happened really. And he was charged with wasting police time. Mm. Now, 
I ask you this. Wasting police time, 250 incidents of the uh, the ambulance or the fire engines having to go to uh, yeah. bonfires, uh, police having to divert traffic. I don't know how many police were on duty uh, on the 12th. Is that not wasting? Are they not doing something that amounts to wasting police time? Yeah, absolutely. Judy, I saw uh, uh, on social media, and I think it was in the newsletter, on I think it was Tuesday, Monday, or no, the 11th night, uh, there was a burning of the Union Jack and the Ulster flag and the Falls Road, and they said police are investigating. Dude, we, uh, we can't mention that, the thing about the, the wheelie bin because somebody's arrested and that makes it so good to see. But, you know, the police seem to, uh, uh, you know, there's a false equiv equivalency. You have thousands upon thousands of incidents, you know, of, uh, you know, loyalists burning flags and tricolors and uh, uh, sectarianism. And yet there's there's sort of one incident, an isolated outlier, you know, and that's, that's oh, by the way, they're doing the same. You know, I, like you have to go, are you kidding? Yeah, yeah. You see, that's the thing they, they really seek. And that's well, that has worked, you know, over the years. Oh, it? absolutely. People in the yeah. say, oh, one, one less is bad as the other. It's a green, I, green and orange I, issue, you know? Uh, it's a green and orange. It's not you. It isn't, you know. Oh. Okay, hey, there are there are definitely Fenians who are not who are not blameless and so on. But hey, it's it's like sort of, let's, let's compare a mountain to a molehill. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. Uh, do you uh, dread the twelfth pattern? Do you, you you know happy enough with it or? Well, you know, uh, no, I I travelled to the north on the twelfth, and I didn't see very much. Uh, and I was in Leitrim and came through Fermanagh and so on, and so. But you know, when uh, when I used to work in uh, the occupied territories, I made a point of uh, not going on to certain loyalist areas around the area like the water side or so on we just couldn't be ours and yeah. by the way one night we were coming home from i think it might have been from spain on the 11th night and by god it was uh we were coming down uh what do you call the place i can't remember the hill and uh, over in the water side and there's guys out with on a couple bond of hills. Uh, uh, bond bond hill. Hill, and what do you call it? there was guys out with masks and i had a southern registers car should have uh, let me tell you it wasn't pleasant for mm. a 10 minutes mm. or so Ah, uh, dear. Well, I, I had a thought. I had an email from a guy who was, said he spent the day in London, spent a couple of days in London just to get away. And when he said, looking around in London and look at how cosmopolitan it was, all the different faces, all the different nationalities, the degree of sort of tolerance and friendliness even towards uh, Irish people, especially, but just in general. He uh, felt of such like it was night and day, the difference. And, you know, I thought the exact same thing when I was uh, down in Dublin. Uh, I thought, you know, what? how nice. I was walking through Stevens Green and people were lying there and, uh, and just taking the sun and uh, chatting. And it was all nationalities. Go down Grafton Street, the same thing. Just people being at their ease with one another. Uh, yeah. We have this cancer. That's what it bloody is. It's a cancer. Uh, it's a, locali a li localized cancer. And it's one that's been uh, sort of shrunk, I hope. But God, it's time uh, we cut it out. It really is time I, we uh, cut it out. I, but you, you, uh, it's, you know that what has somebody said that uh, the hatred's intimidatory, it's despicable, and it's sort of sort of premeditated, and it's going on every year. Dude, uh, we say I think you said it in Monday, and I certainly said it in Monday. Like if loyalism and or the POUL community want to celebrate its culture, sure, everybody we're going to support it. But you, I think you used a term. It's a vehicle that's used to uh, the, that that was uh, used to serve, serve the the culture. Uh, there must be a way to, to uh, celebrate the culture that it's not uh, that it's a whole um, what we say way of being as to uh, as to insult others. I, I hate to say this, but I I do believe that the fact that it rubs the Athenians the wrong way is part of the fun, an important part of the fun. I I, I I but you. I, but that's that's in the long term going to kill it. Because, oh yeah. You know, yeah. If you're if you're, defi if you're defined by what you hate, not by what you love. Uh, I think. Uh, yeah. Very very good. Well 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 summarized there, Pat. Yeah. Uh, right. Shall we move on? Uh, what was the next one? Um, this heat wave. Is that what uh, yeah. Where we were looking, they're talking about thirty plus. Yes, Doctor Collins. I was listening to the news this morning, and they're issuing. <laughs> imagine in the Republic of Ireland. How do you laugh? <laughs> They're issuing a, 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 a sort of, what would you say? No, it's not a weather warning. I don't know. They're issuing a heat wave warning uh. that people should be careful that they're they're talking about having 31 and 32 degrees in some places. Jude, 
Look at you and look at me. Jesus, <laughs> dude, you know, what do you call it? Uh, I could... Uh, well, you're saying we're looking at risk, Pat? you saying I'm not uh, Well, risk. I'm speaking personally, I am. Like, yeah. I could be a fridge door, I'm that white. You know, <laughs> and, and and you don't look too too colourful to me either. You know, <laughs> Jesus, dude, you know, uh, as, as, are we the whitest people in Europe uh, because it rains that much, or as the Norwegians? I'm not sure. We, uh, the degrees well, of whiteness. We are a very white race, anyway. We've got lots uh, of red hair. Uh, people red hair, red hair and whatever. People. Notoriously, but, the, you know, but I, I had a laugh. Thirty-one and thirty-two, dude. We were in uh, Greece. We were in Crete about uh, uh, that's a wee uh, lifetime ago. But one day it had forty-four degrees, and we were. Um, Rosie says, uh, "My dear wife said there was no, there was this place known as Coronary or what Heart Attack Hill," and she says, "I am not walking up there today." So we got a taxi for about three hundred yards, mm. but it was so warm, dude, that you. I I think uh, me and sides were sort of. Uh, it was like an oven. I think me and Sage were starting to cook. Well, you see, I we used to find this is in Canada. It was not, it's quite a, well, quite common for it to go up into the thirties. Yeah. And I I've been in Phoenix in Arizona, where yeah. I mean the temperatures are ferocious there. I got up to forty, but no bother. And yeah. I've also been we, we swapped that a house swap in Andalusia. Andalusia. <laughs> anyway, I said that Andalusia. Uh, um, yeah. <laughs> and it was it was. Uh, Really, really warm, and I used to go jogging. But I, again, I timed it very carefully. I waited till the sort of serious heat stopped, and then did my jog. And even yeah. then, the sweat was rolling off me. But yeah. here, somebody said, "Look, if you, every but every climate has its drawbacks, yeah. especially in either summer or winter. So, which would you rather have: a blisteringly hot uh, summer or an absolutely sodden and freezing and horrible winter you know I t if i was faced with it i'd i'd up for the fantastic summer yeah do you, uh, well you just uh, my favorite nearly well just about my favorite place in the world is andalusia dude i've driven through there many a day and uh, i know seeing a summer's evening in andalusia when the heat of the day has gone out and you can sit outside maybe on a veranda or something like a wee cheap hotel in the middle of nowhere and sit with a glass of wine there is a god <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> I think we were both meant God made a mistake when he put us in this part of the earth. Yeah, uh, he really should have put us in another uh, one. Uh, well, we're getting absolutely. the ten minutes. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, I'm, I'm just agree with you totally. But yeah. you, you know, the other thing about without born uh, our two viewers to death, you know, that this um, summer it's just been grey day followed by grey day by followed by grey day. No, you get about ten minutes sun. And this is July. This is our peak. Uh, uh, that's right. That's right. Uh, it's very disappointing. Even today, looking out now, there's a bit of uh, sunshine, but it's a, it'll be gone in another couple of minutes. Uh, it's very warm out, but it's uh, still you're not getting the sunshine. The sunshine makes yeah. a big difference, I think. Okay, yeah. um, let's to go on to the Dublin government. The Dublin government had good news and bad news this week. Uh, the first, the good news was that it survived the uh, the. Vote on the vote of no confidence, no confidence. and uh, then tell us about the bad news. But I, I, I love that they switched it around. It's actually the vote of no confidence, and actually they placed the government put down their own vote, vote of confidence, and they won it by I think it was it was it eighty eight votes to sixty six. Something like that. Uh, someone I got, I'm not 100% certain, but the, <laughs> and were, I saw all the ministers on uh, various spokespeople on cock a hoop and so on saying that, you know, how wonderful it was. Not. But the bad news is Fianna Fáil is now, I wrote these down because I'm useless at figures, are on 20%, they're down three. Fun Gale are on 18, down four. Uh, the Green Party, a GP, I thought it was a doctor, uh, Green Party are, are on three, which is no change. But Sinn Féin are on 36, up three. And dude, basically, it seems to be what's happening uh, is that just every uh, poll that comes along, the shinners are going up and up and up. Here, here's the thing, dude. This morning, I just read that there's a. You mentioned Alicante. There's a hospital in Alicante which will now be taking Irish hospital patients uh, and doing procedures up to fifteen hundred a year. They so they have specifically agreed some sort of deal with some sort of Irish healthcare provider. Not 100% certain in the background. I just saw it earlier before we came on air, as, mm -hmm. as it were. And they, But a, holiday, a hospital in Spain is willing to look after 1,500 Irish patients. Doesn't mm -hmm. that tell you how dysfunctional the health service in the Republic of Ireland? But you, let me add this as well before you come in. There's about, um, you, you, people keep asking, if everything's so good about the uh, Republic of Ireland, the economy and all the rest, dude, there's about a million people on the hospital waiting list. 
there's, I don't know, about two, up to 200,000 people waiting on the housing list. Um, the, the economic indicators are all brilliant, you know, uh, growth of 4%, two yeah, brilliant yeah. ahead of all the rest of it. But you, you don't, people don't judge on uh, how they're living, how well the corporations just do, are doing. It's whether they can get their child into a school, whether the hip the replacement is, is, is working, you know, and all the other services that they can afford a house. Yeah, I, yeah, you're right. Well, it's it's like you said on one other occasion in terms of the troubles. It's when it comes to your own door, that's when you suddenly begin to see things for real. And it's yeah. the same thing, I think, with uh, the whole economy. It's, it's all very well to see all these wonderful figures and we're two billion more in the, in yeah, the uh, yeah. you know, in the green rather than the red. red uh, yeah. But it, it has to find its way down. And in any case, the South is notoriously... Uh, well, it's the same, similar in the north, of course, and in Britain. But uh, South is notoriously um, separated by those who have and those who haven't. Yeah. You have multimillionaires, and you have people sleeping on the streets, yeah. um, which is a shocking thing to hear. Tell me this, Pat. This this is the latest poll. Shouldn't we keep going up and up and up and up? Yeah. Right. So clearly, people see them as saying some stuff that they want to hear. Now, yeah. essentially, what Sinn Féin is saying is that they will solve this housing crisis and it's not being yeah. solved by the government. Uh, they say they will deal with hospitals and waiting yeah. lists and all the rest of it. Have they said how they'll do it? Yeah, uh, they've, well, they've said, they'll. Uh, for instance, a lot of the things in Dublin, they're going, they're, they're, they were talking some time back, Owen O'Brien was talking about uh, having a system similar to Germany's uh, where, where there's rent controls, where there's and the people say the others will come out of the market. Jude, what's happening in the Republic? And this is a short version. I'm not speaking as any expert. Basically, when a housing estate's finished, in comes a uh, vulture fund or cuckoo fund or whatever the hell they call them these days, yeah. buys yeah. up the whole thing and says to hell with it. So the average rent, as I've told you a million times, is somewhere now about two two thousand. The last occasion, go, uh, I think earlier this week, Jude. In fact, Dublin is now the most expensive city in the EU. So on. Isn't that unbelievable? But can, the, can, can Sinn Féin do anything? Can Sinn Féin say, well, we, we're going to... Uh, uh, yeah, Owen O'Brien has said that, uh, here, and by the way, uh, I take it that he has put it out there and discussed the party. This guy is uh, regarded as, uh, as a bit of a genius when it comes to house, house yeah. situation. So let's see if his policies work. But he's saying that they're going to introduce rent control. They're going to make, build more public housing. There are going to be incentives for people to buy their own houses, but within a sort of limited economic uh, mm -hmm. sort of structure. And that the day of, of depending on the market and exploitation of working people should be over. Now, Jude, they, they have said they've got the plans and they've worked it through and they've talked to housing experts uh, across the globe, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So let's see. But Jude, the biggest thing by a mile is our health center, our health system is so dysfunctional. We're spending more in Germany and in most other European countries. And I've said this before as well, I mean, yet our outcomes are atrocious. They're saying the hospital, the Dutch model is supposed to be the best in Europe. And um, they're, they're talking that uh, their centers are looking at how could we introduce, introduce a Dutch model? Uh, Jude, what the Dutch model is, I don't know. Yeah, well, it, it does. It's very clear that the public are putting their faith in. So these polls are correct. And I'm sure they're correct because they've been steady, steady for the last going up and up and up for the last uh, two years. Uh, yeah. They're putting an awful lot of faith in the in the shitters, and uh, I'm not sure that it's we as well known uh, as you have indicated what the shitters say they're going to do. Do you remember we you talked we talked about um, say a border poll? in Scotland yeah. or in Ireland, yeah. where, yes, a big research document, but boil the thing down to 10 points that people can yeah. grasp and make it very, very clear to them. I think it would be most helpful if Sinn Féin, as the party that looks like it's waiting to take uh, the reins of government, uh, if it was to list the th problems and, uh, you know, the big thing that they're going to do. Yeah. Uh, I I'm assuming... Now, maybe I'm wrong, but I'm assuming that the government hasn't done this. The Dublin no. government hasn't done what yeah. um, O'Brien is suggesting because they're too much involved, too too much in bed with the uh, the big developers. Is that right? Yeah, but I, but you, there's also a lot. I think that there's a, a bit of po uh, politics getting played here. Uh, the Dublin government have stolen a couple of uh, things. They brought back the the shinners. 
suggested some time ago that bring back the budget, the autumn budget earlier, and they've done that. And they've, I think the Shinners are sort of saying if they throw out all their policies out there before the election, that the Dublin government just steal their clothes. Uh -huh. So I'd say there, there's a lot of things that they're going to, you know, keep, you know, uh, remember the Labour Party in Britain the first day, they separated the, uh, uh, the central bank from the government, you know, uh, so... Uh, and that made a big change in fiscal policy. I presume the Shinners have some plans, uh, that they're, but they're keeping them to themselves. Dude, the proof of the pudding, if they get into government and they mess up, they'll be, be just another political party. Yeah, that's right. And I must say, I hadn't thought about that. You know, they're, they're probably right to keep their party dry until yeah. such time as they're going into the election. And then yeah. when they can lay it uh, yeah. out for people, it'll, there'll be a degree of novelty and newness to yeah. it, freshness to it. Uh, that's very astute of you, Pat. Do you ever yeah. think of becoming a politician? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, but uh, you can see, you can see, Jude, why would they throw out the sort of uh, inning now for, uh, to allow fin, uh, fin Gael and um, Fianna Fáil to either A, sort of dump it, or B, uh, just take it on board and claim it as their policy? It just wouldn't make political right. sense. Okay, one, one last question, because we only about a minute left, Pat. I was listening to a show called, I think it's called The Media Show on BBC Radio, and yeah. the guy was saying that... Um, as a journal, no journalist should socialize with politicians or members of a political party because he says it's very, yeah, if you've been uh, clinking glasses with somebody the night before, uh, you're not going to write an article that's going to be critical of them. Do you agree with yeah. that? Absolutely. Like 10 but seconds it's, back. But it's, it's impossible. Look at Laura, Laura Kunzberg. She was yeah. quite friendly with Boris Johnson, it was quite obvious. And, you know, B the BBC during her term as political editor was very reluctant. Hey, some of the exposes were left to play people like Channel 4. Mm. Interesting. So what was that a problem for you during your time in the... Uh, of course, it's just, uh, you know, on a local level, like if you're the editor of the Derry Journal, John Hume's in your door, Martin McGuinness is in your door, and, mm. uh, you know, all the local uh, MLAs not, are in your door. So, you, 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 and you're working on a small pond, you're dealing right. with, the, with the same fish. Difficult. It's difficult, you know, because everybody has a political view. Anyway, Pat, that has been most enlightening. Thank you very much, Pat. All I'll the enjoy, best, enjoy your sweltering weekend. Yes, I have the show's actually out here. Our numbers are rocketing even are quicker than Shin.